You cannot necessarily insist that your criminal trial goes to the Crown Court. Likewise, you cannot necessarily insist that it stays in the Magistrates Court. What is the difference and why can you sometimes choose and you sometimes cannot choose? That's what I'll explain in this video, even though I've done it before, I'll link the original video in the description below, but I felt that this needed a refresh because there's a lot of conversations about it on Twitter. But first of all, if you're new to me, I am Daniel Shensmith, a barrister of England and Wales, and I enjoy helping you to understand law. So I'd be really grateful if you bop that like button and subscribe. It helps my channel grow and it helps to keep me motivated to keep making these videos and helping you to understand law. So let's get into it. Why can you sometimes choose and sometimes you can't. Well, I've explained this in a number of different videos before, but before we get into when and why and how you can choose, let's talk about the differences in the courts to begin with. The Magistrates Court will hear less severe cases, and the most distinct difference between the Magistrates Court and the Crown Court is that there is no jury in the Magistrates Court. It's either a lay bench of magistrates, or it is a district judge, but no jury. So if you go to the Crown Court, you will see that there is a jury panel, which is the finder of fact. The judge remains the finder of law, questions of law in the Crown Court, but in the Magistrates Court, the bench is also the finder of fact. You might find this a little bit odd in that on the one hand, you've got the bench, considering whether or not a piece of evidence is admissible against you, and for technical reasons they might rule that this bit of evidence is not admissible as evidence against you, and that they are to disregard it, even though they then go on to make a finding of fact as to whether you're guilty or not. Whereas, again, a distinct difference in the Crown Court, is if there is a legal argument over a piece of evidence and the judge rules in the absence of the jury, so the ju jury don't hear these legal arguments, the judge may rule that this piece of evidence is not admissible. The jury may never hear about that bit of evidence, let alone have a look at it, consider it, and rest their decisions on it. So in the Crown Court, the judge might rule a piece of evidence inadmissible. The jury never hears it, and then the jury only have to decide the case on the evidence that they do hear. Now that is a significant difference. The second significant difference is the seriousness of the offences and the requisite punishment that you might receive if found guilty of any one of those offences. So quite obviously in the Crown Court there are much more severe penalties than in the Magistrates Court. The Magistrates Court is limited in certainly in the custodial sentence that it can impose upon a convicted defendant. Now, confusingly, especially for law students, depending on when you're taking the course, because when you're taking a course, especially the bar course, it is set on a given set of rules and law at that time, regardless of whether it changes. Confusingly, you may or may not have heard that last year, in May last year, on the 2nd of May last year, 2022, the maximum custodial sentence permitted for a magistrate's court doubled from 6 months to 12 months for offences after that date for any given offence. However, that was a bit of an experiment, and on the 9th of March of this year, that decision was then reversed, reverting the maximum sentence applicable in the Magistrates Court for either way offences from 12 months back down to 6 months. But let's talk a little bit more about those offences. An offence can be either summary only, it can be an either way offence, which I'll explain in a moment, or it can be indictable only. Now, indictable only means it can only be heard on an indictment in the Crown Court with a jury. Summary only means it is to be tried summarily only in the Magistrates Court. Now, there's a few misnomers which I'll come back to at the end of this, such as low value shoplifting and criminal damage under £5,000, which is a bit of a quirky one, so I'll come back to that. So a summary only offence is only going in the Magistrates Court. If you were to be a defendant to a summary only offence, you can only have your trial in the Magistrates Court. Despite what I read on Twitter last night, you have no choice to insist that your case goes to the Crown Court with a jury. If it's a summary only offence, you can only have your trial in the Magistrates Court. No jury. 
Now, if it's an either way offence, that means it could be in the Magistrates Court or it could be in the Crown Court, hence either way. How that is determined, however, is another matter. This is referred to as mode of trial. The Magistrates Court will make a determination as to whether or not it accepts jurisdiction to hear this case, and if so, then it can be heard in the Magistrates Court. But if it's an either way offence, you then have a choice whether to elect Crown Court trial. And most defendants are advised to elect Crown Court trial because you get a jury, and it's a lower conviction rate because it has a jury. But some defendants simply want it over and done with as quickly as possible, and possibly benefit from the lower sentencing powers of the Magistrates Court, but even that comes with a caveat, and so some defendants choose to have it stay in the Magistrates Court. However, coming back to that point, if you are convicted in the Magistrates Court of an either way offence, then the court can still send you as a convicted defendant to the Crown Court for sentence. That is, a sending of the case to the Crown Court for sentence, even if it's been heard in the Magistrates Court in the first place. However, it should be obvious by now, if you are charged with an indictable only offence, then it is only triable in the Crown Court, it is going to the Crown Court, and you cannot insist that it stays in the Magistrates Court. However, coming back down the rungs again, if you are charged with an either way offence and the Magistrates Court declines jurisdiction and sends your case to the Crown Court, then again you have no choice for it to be heard in the Magistrates Court, it is going to be heard in the Crown Court. So that is very broadly how that works. However, there's a bit of a confusion because all criminal cases will start life in the Magistrates Court. And that is the case even for indictable only offences. However, the difference there is there will be no formal plea entered at the Magistrates Court. There will be an indication of plea, which is the earliest opportunity to indicate a plea in the Magistrates Court, although it won't be a formal plea for an indictable only offence because it's going to the Crown Court, because it can only be heard in the Crown Court and the formal plea will be entered at the PTPH, which is the Plea and Trial Preparation Hearing, at the Crown Court, which typically lasts anything from 10 or 15 minutes to an hour or two, depending on the case and the complexity of the case, the number of witnesses and all of that sort of stuff. So then some people ask, well, if you've had your trial in the Magistrates Court and you've been convicted in the Magistrates Court, can you then appeal that case? The simple answer is yes, you can. There is a strict time limit of 15 working days within which you must appeal to the Crown Court, and beyond that you'll need the permission of the Crown Court. It's not impossible, but you'll need the permission and a good reason as to why you didn't appeal within that strict time limit. However, there is a very important difference between your appeal in the Crown Court of your conviction from the Magistrates Court and an ordinary trial in the Crown Court and that is that there is no jury. If you appeal a Magistrates Court conviction to the Crown Court, you will have a judge and two magistrates hear your appeal, and it's generally in the form of a re-hearing. The judge might ask you questions during the hearing, and the prosecution again will put your case to the court as though you are guilty. You will have the opportunity to put your case that you are not guilty, and the judge and magistrates collectively will come to a decision as to whether your appeal is successful. If your appeal is successful on the conviction, then your conviction is quashed and then you are free to leave. However, it's important to remember that if you are going to appeal a case to the Crown Court, it is always going to appear somewhat jaded in that you're already convicted by a court. So although it is a rehearing, you do have to bear that in mind. So whilst some defendants opt to stay in the Magistrates Court, knowing that they can appeal to the Crown Court, it's not necessarily the best way of going about it. Very often it will be better to elect the Crown Court trial in the first place, have your trial with the jury, and have the jury determine whether or not you are guilty. So this is why it's always important to take advice. But this is also why you cannot insist on your case going to the Crown Court, and you cannot insist on it staying in the Magistrates Court.
So I hope that was a useful overview and a recap. There's a few more details in the other video that I've left out purposely so that you'll go and watch that other video linked in the description below, which was one of the very early videos that I did on this channel, and I'm still here. So I'd really appreciate you hit that like button and subscribe, and I thank you for watching.